I'm coming from the Danish Energy Agency under the Minister of Climate, Energy and Buildings. Uh, one of my general, uh, one of my uh, major uh, tasks in, uh, in the Energy Agency is to take care of uh, the general renewable energy issues at uh, European and uh, Nordic uh, level. I was preparing the National Renewable Energy Action Plan for Denmark <coughs> to the Commission. And I'm also, uh, in fact, uh, the chairman of the, the Nordic Working Group for Renewable Energy. So that's where I also have the focus, <coughs> the Nordic fo focus in, in, my, in my work. It is a rather uh, comprehensive uh, uh, area to, to, uh, to cover with these few minutes. I prepared a rather comprehens comprehensive uh, presentation. Uh, but I don't think it will be, be possible to go in details with all the, <clears throat> the information. I have for that purpose uh, prepared handouts, which you can see here for my presentation, where you can go in further details and also ask questions today or later on. And uh, also per, uh, uh, come with a, <clears throat> a leaflet uh, describing the new energy uh, agreement in the Danish parliament uh, on the way to 2020. So if you don't have uh, these two, uh, these documents already, please take them when you go to, to the, the break. I will uh, make a rather uh, quick uh, picture of the historical uh, RIS development in Denmark, and further also some few words about the Danish e EU charges for RIS development. We have also been requested to talk about cooperation me uh, mechanisms, how we, we plan to, to handle that in Denmark, and then uh, going further to the main topic for my presentation, what are the policy challenges which we have <clears throat> faced on the way to 2020 based on our Renewable Energy Action Plan. And uh, if time allows, uh, some few words about the new energy agreement mm, uh, with ex expected results and which initiatives we are, we are planning to take. But uh, uh, I think in that, that case, you can go in further details uh, by looking in the leaflet, which I have uh, <coughs> uh, 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 um, taken with me. So this uh, diagram, some of you may have seen before, well known, that uh, Denmark has been, has been possible in Denmark uh, for the last 30 years to delink the economic growth from energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions. And there are three uh, main reasons for that. Uh, comprehensive uh, use of combined heat and power in Denmark, uh, renewable energy uh, development, and energy savings, I think, in that order. Uh, so those are the reasons that we have been possible for us to uh, have a more or less uh, cons constant gross, gross energy consumption over the last uh, 30 years. You can see it, going, it goes down in 2008 uh, due to the financial crisis, all uh, three uh, parameters, GDP, growth energy consumption, and greenhouse gas emissions. The next slide is showing uh, a rather steady development since 1980 uh, with a steady increase of uh, a number of renewable energy t technologies, wind, blue, straw, yellow, wood, green, uh, orange, uh, is biogas, grey waste, uh, the organic uh, fraction of waste, and uh, the, the red one is heat pumps. And uh, the den general policy for many years in Denmark has been to support all these kind of uh, renewable energy te technologies, not only one, and that's one of the reasons this the, the wish to have a diversified uh, development that uh, Denmark has never uh, used a technology neutral RIS uh, uh, support policy. Next one is showing uh, the, the development of renewable energy in Denmark uh, in going from mm, uh, less than 5% in, in 1980 until a mm, little bit more than 20% mm, in, uh, in uh, 2010. 70% uh, of that in, in the general picture is from biomass. When you look at the electricity system, uh, two thirds is coming from wind power and one third is coming from biomass. And now we are facing around 35% percent renewables in the electricity system. Also, this is showing a picture which is substantial for Danish politicians that we 
the turnover of Danish energy technology in the, has more than doubled in the last decade, and the increase in employ employees in the energy sector uh, has uh, increased with around 25%. I will not go into details uh, with these uh, key instruments. We have always used uh, rather uh, broad uh, package of instruments uh, from economic uh, subsidies, taxes on fossil fuels, uh, research development and demonstration uh, assistance, and also uh, looking at the broader historical perspective, used uh, agreements between energy utilities and the state uh, which still is being used. It's more complicated in a liberalized market, but still, however, we still use uh, this, uh, this instrument in the Danish renewable energy uh, <coughs> policy. So, in short, a combination of a rather uh, strong state and the market, and in some periods during the last 30 years, the, the involvement from the state has been stronger than other periods, but in general, uh, that is uh, the, the, the picture a strong straight in the market <clears throat> and this interaction. Not going into details with that, just showing how that Denmark was uh, had a very substantial uh, <clears throat> development of renewable energy in EU from 1990 to 2005. And I think you can find in the handouts <coughs> uh, where your country is in this uh, picture. Going further to the IES directive, uh, <clears throat> we have a the Danish uh, target, binding target is on 30% share of renewable energy uh, <clears throat> and a 10% share in the transport sector as all other uh, countries in the European Union. Today, uh, the, the starting point was 17% in 2005. And uh, this slide is also showing the, comparing the Danish uh, uh, IES increase in EU with the other 26 uh, member states. So showing that we are going to have a, a IES increase on certain, uh, on certain 13 percent point <coughs> in this uh, 15 years uh, period. This uh, slide is taken from the National Energy, Renewable Energy Action Plan, showing <coughs> the 2005 uh, situation with 70 percent uh, and the 2020 uh, target with 30 percent percent and showing that uh, our expected development of uh, IS share is uh, all in all years above mm, the, the minimum trajectory uh, defined by, mm, by the IS uh, directive. So the current positions, which we also have asked to say a bit, a bit about in the, this presentation, is saying, uh, according to the action plan that Denmark expects to fulfill our targets through uh, domestic initiatives. We are not planning to import uh, uh, IES from other countries. We are willing to transfer surplus IES and participate in common project as well in the period before 2020. But, uh, when, but as you see, we are just planning to, to meet our target in the, in the, according to the action plan, which means that it may not be uh, very uh, well used uh, if, the, the, if there is any interest to, to uh, make some trade in the period before 2020. We, are, we have identified a need for further development, operational development of the cooperation mechanism in the RES directive, and that's one of the reasons that we in the Nordic uh, cooperation have uh, carried out a, co a couple of studies in this regard and also are planning to launch uh, a new uh, study, <coughs> which is in tender now, uh, regarding you, uh, looking at the, uh, using the uh, joint project mechanism as a way to promote uh, offshore wind, and maybe in particular in those countries, Norway and Sweden, where <coughs> you have the green certificate, certificate scheme, which uh, is not expected to be sufficient uh, subsidy to uh, promote offshore wind uh, <coughs> in contradiction to how we, we do in, in Denmark. But um, which, which I also will come back to, that Denmark may come in a new position as a consequence of the new energy agreement in Parliament, where we are expecting to uh, uh, deliver uh, substantial more than 30% renewable energy in 2020, approximately 35% in 2020, 
but that uh, no decision has been taken or we are not preparing <coughs> this uh, for the time being, but that could be a new Denmark could, could uh, decide to go in a, a new position and be uh, a seller country <coughs> in 2020, according to the cooperation mechanism. So what are the, the policy challenges which we have uh, <coughs> Uh, faced uh, when we prepared our action plan uh, until 2020. Uh, looking at the opportunities and the potentials, it is uh, by far uh, uh, sure that the largest increase until 2020 will be expected from uh, wind power and conversion from coal to solid biomass on the last uh, large coal-fired power plants and CHP plants in, in Denmark. Um, and th this will, I mean, may, uh, regarding the, the, the switch from coal to biomass, that will in particular be, is already being, uh, be uh, based on a high degree of import from uh, the wood pellets, uh, uh, in particular from uh, European Union and very much from the Baltic countries. So we have a, a big uh, trade uh, uh, between the Baltic countries and Denmark regarding wood pellets already today. But the, back to the challenges, we look at the wind power. Offshore wind uh, is an area where you have a full governmental control over the Danish territory, and you are in Denmark using the policy instrument a tendering system for offshore, a market-based tendering system, which means that the cheapest uh, supplier will win. So the only uh, challenge you can say is that uh, it is more expensive than uh, land power, land wind on land. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, we have decided in the Danish New Energy Agreement to uh, go for 1,000 megawatt additional uh, offshore wind and 500 megawatt uh, coast, coast wind uh, uh, in coastal areas, also offshore, before 2020. Looking at onshore wind, this is the cheapest way in Denmark to uh, increase the uh, renewable energy uh, share. Uh, so we are going and pushing a lot to, uh, to do that also in Denmark, but that is maybe, uh, that is uh, more challenging from uh, other area, other issues in the economy, local acceptance and other land use interest. So we will see how much we can do, but we are facing a uh, planning to uh, 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 <coughs> demolish a number of, of smaller wind turbines and, and, uh, and change them with the fewer, higher uh, wind turbines. Solid biomass, which I mentioned was the other area where we are f uh, expecting a lot of uh, increase, uh, has faced that the financial vi vi viability for switching from coal to biomass is limited. Uh, that has been uh, set by a number of the big players in the Danish market. That's one, one, uh, one uh, challenge. And the other one is that there's a risk uh, that you easily can switch backwards from uh, to wood pillars to coal if it is more feasible in the 2019 example giving. So that means that you could come in a situation where you are in 2018, were very well on track, but you, that could uh, go down <coughs> when we come to 2020. Uh, biogas <coughs> has been an area which we have had a, a development for, for many years. But uh, not, not much has happened the last decade uh, uh, because of too low financial viability. The government, the parliament has a number of times changed the framework conditions. Uh, so that's one of the areas uh, which we need to face if we want to go further. Uh, but it is, should also be mentioned that this is an area where there is a lot of political interest for regarding green growth in the agriculture sector, environmental policy and also uh, a policy desire to use biogas for other purposes than CHP in Denmark. <clears throat> so far, all, all biogas has been used for CHP. Regarding IS in other sectors, industry, buildings and transport, again, too low financial viability in industry. Uh, phase a discussion how to reduce use of oil and natural gas for individual heating, and also, as you it's the same case in all countries that the transport sector is almost running entirely on fossil fuels. 
we are facing a, maybe a Danish uh, problem, which may be also a, a problem for uh, other uh, European countries, that we are expecting 50% electricity in grid from wind in 2020, according to our agreement and our plans, and how to uh, secure uh, these volatile electricity can function in, 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 in the grid in 2020. And then uh, finally, I will mention that uh, we have a long-term uh, plan to change the energy system to be 100% fossil uh, free in 2050. And uh, looking into the Danish resources, it appears that uh, wind electricity offshore in particular is the only resource which is more or less unlimited in Denmark. And therefore, as a, the long-term plan in Denmark is to switch from a mainly fuel-based energy system, which we have in Denmark uh, today, to a more electricity-based energy system, uh, which is another reason also when we're looking forward that Denmark is not facing to use a, have a technology neutral uh, support system, because if you want to go for fossil fuel for, for fuel-based system to a more electricity-based system, then it can justify also higher subsidies to, for example, uh, offshore wind <coughs> than other other <coughs> uh, technologies in the Danish uh, energy system. So that was some of the the main policy changes challenges as we see on the way to 2020. And what is the solution? That is the, the new Danish Energy Agreement, which uh, was uh, uh, agreed by a broad majority in Parliament in March this year. Uh, and some of the headlines, according to our scenarios and uh, the initiatives which are, uh, uh, are agreed, is that now we are focusing, we are expecting that more than 35% renewable energy should be in final energy consumption, where the EU target is 30% that approximately 50% of electricity consumption should be supplied by wind power in 2020, and then uh, further one, further a reduction in gross energy consumption with 7.6% in relation to 2020, 2010, sorry, and also a substantial reduction in greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, these are, we have, only two, I don't know. So uh, I, I, I knew that I was not able to go into details <laughs> with, the, with the, in a, the energy uh, agreement. However, you can read more about it, how we have tried to, uh, to solve these policy challenges, which I have uh, highlighted. Uh, so please look it into the leaflet. And just, I just want to show very few <clears throat> slides about the expected results. The final energy consumption should go down instead of uh, going up. Uh, which uh, the, the slide on the curve on the left side shows, the share of renewable energy should go to 35% uh, con in contradiction to the baseline scenario, which are lower around 29%. And <clears throat> here you can also see what was the ex expected <clears throat> results of the RE development <clears throat> in total and in electricity sector. So. I think that was everything. Did I manage to do it within <laughs> 50 minutes? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much.